Nilu is elegant, gracious, and a literal game changer. She is the first Genshin character ever to have a passive that can change the way elemental reactions work. You see, Nilu is able to convert Dendro cores produced by mixing Hydro and Dendro into Bountiful cores. Bountiful cores have a bigger explosion radius, explode faster, and provide better damage scaling than a regular core. Nilu's passive Dreamy Dance of Aeons allow her to increase the damage of these Bountiful cores by up to 400% depending on her max HP value. Bountiful cores cannot react with Electro or Pyro, making them very consistent versus enemies that can apply those elements onto the field, and the Bountiful cores also deal Dendro damage on Explosion. For Nilu to convert Dendro cores into Bountiful cores, she must meet the following conditions of her Golden Chalice's Bounty passive. The on-field team must consist only of Dendro and Hydro characters, with at least one Dendro and one Hydro character, and Nilu must complete the third step of her Elemental Skill Dance. More on this in a moment. If these conditions are met, your party will be granted the Golden Chalice's bounty buff for 30 seconds. This buff also gives your team 100 elemental mastery for 10 seconds whenever you take Dendro damage, like from Bountiful Cores exploding. Bloom Cores do inflict damage to the player, so this is actually pretty synergistic. Because of the Golden Chalice's passive, Nilu is allowed to play Genshin in a whole new way. It is important to note that Bloom Explosions and Bountiful Explosions cannot crit and has its damage scaled off of Elemental Mastery. Outside of this passive, Nilu is a HP scaling Hydro Sword user who wants to be on field most of the time to deal her damage, making her an ideal main DPS candidate. Focusing on crit damage and crit rate can help Nilu's personal damage, while focusing on Elemental Mastery increases her Bloom damage. Depending on if you want to utilize Nilu for her Golden Chalice passive or not, your build and focus on Elemental Mastery or Crit may be very different. However, you will always be focusing on HP. I will always recommend if you are interested in Nilu to make the most out of her unique kit and go for an HP% percent and Elemental Mastery focus and play around Bountiful Cores. I do wonder though, how strong is Nilu without her Golden Chalice passive? Let me know in the comments below and while you're down there, give this video a like and consider subscribing for more content like this. Thank you so much. Nilu's elemental skill is the enabler of her special Golden Chalice passive, and it's a bit confusing if you just read the tooltip. At first, I thought it was just a toggle for elemental damage or normal attacks like Hu Tao or Child, but Nilu is a bit more sophisticated than both of them, so here's how it works. When Nilu uses her elemental skill, she goes into a stance and has three charges. Her elemental skill transforms into an alternative attack called Whirling Steps, while her normal attacks are called Sword Dances. You may alternate between her elemental attack or normal attack, but the very last charge, your third attack, will grant you a buff depending on if you end with Whirling Steps or Sword Dance. Let's call this the Finisher. Sword Dance Finisher gives Nilu the Lunar Prayer buff, a 10 second Hydro Infusion and HP scaling to her normal attacks, and Whirling Steps gives Nilu the Tranquility Aura buff, a Hydro Aura that consistently applies wet to all nearby enemies and will persist even if Nilu is not on the field. While subtle, Whirling Steps allow Nilu to be an on-field support if you wanted to make a Golden Chalice Bountiful core team, but not use Nilu as your main DPS or driver in the future. The best way to think about it is like Deluxe's elemental skill. You can cast it three times or you can weave some other normal attacks in between. Just know that the third attack you do is going to be the thing that causes the finisher to go off. While minor, the options to more customize a character's attack pattern meaningfully has been something I've been wanting to see for quite a while now. And also luckily for us, her elemental burst is much simpler. It is a 70 energy cost, 18 second cooldown, HP scaling, damage nuke, where Nilu on cast does a big burst of damage, then after a set time, Nilu does a bigger burst of damage. This elemental burst further supports that idea that Nilu in the future can just be an off-field, bounty for core swapping teammate, where you come in, use her burst, and then you just put the whirling steps on her, and then you swap out for your other teammates to play. Taking that into account, Nilu seems to be a lot more flexible than I previously thought. I can definitely see some design choices that will make her a great partner for somebody like Alhatham or Tignari Bloom teams in the future. Speaking of teammates, as of Nilu's initial release, a dedicated Bloom team for her seems very limited. Since Bloom does deal damage to the players, we're most certainly going to want a healer or shielder on this team. Right now, there's a lack of shielders who are Hydro or Dendro, so it'll be up to you if you want to pair up Nilu with Kokomi, Barbara, or even Singsho, who can sort of kind of shield and heal with his elemental skill. Singsho adds a nice damage boost with his elemental burst, so if you're not too worried about taking a lot of damage, he can be a nice alternative over Kokomi and Barbara. 
Once a healer does come out on the Dendro side, I would still recommend attempting for a 2 Hydro, 2 Dendro team so you can benefit from both the Hydro and Dendro Elemental Resonance, both of which are very great for Nilu. With the Hydro Resonance providing a 25% max HP bonus and the Dendro Resonance providing up to 100 extra Elemental Mastery. On the Dendro side, we're pretty limited to Dendro Traveler and Kali at the moment. They're very good for this team, but that may change real soon. Nahida, the Dendro Archon, will soon be making her way into the game, and rumor has it that one of her constellations will allow Dendro reactions like Bloom to crit. This is huge for Nilu, whose main source of damage right now comes from Blooms. As we get more Dendro and Hydro characters, Nilu's Bloom team comp potential will increase, and as mentioned earlier, if you want to play someone else as a main DPS, Nilu's burst and rolling step buff is enough for her to bring some utility to that sort of team. If you're thinking of running Nilu in a non-Bloom team, feel free to experiment to your heart's desire. Here are some idea starters for you. Nilu seems pretty fun in a Vape or Permafreeze team. In a Vape team, I could see Zhangling, Amber, or even Toma being paired up with Nilu alongside Kazuha or Sucrose for that extra elemental mastery and swirling potential. In a Permafreeze team, Ganyu and Kaya comes to mind with their consistent cryo output. So have fun, and if you're getting experimental, let me know what you end up doing in the comments below. Nilu's artifact builds seem pretty simple due to her not having a tailor-made set for her as of yet. Nilu cannot make use of the 4-piece Heart of Death due to her infused normal attack scaling as elemental skill damage. However, Nilu can utilize any combination of 2-piece Tenacity, which gives HP bonus, 2-piece Heart of Death, which gives Hydro Damage bonus, or 2-piece Gilded Dreams or Wanderer's Troops, which gives elemental mastery. As of right now, I would focus on HP% percent Sands, but EM Sands can be great too if you are using certain weapons that give you a ton of HP%. Percent. For Goblet, I would also go for HP% percent over Hydro Damage Up, mostly due to Nilu's damage coming from Bloom over her personal Hydro Damage. But this may change in the future. If you are playing her outside of Bloom teams, then Hydro Damage is also preferred. Speaking of which, the combination of artifact sets you choose to put on Nilu will be dependent on which weapons you want to run for Nilu. Nilu's best in slot weapon is the key of Kash Nisut. Not only is it hard to pronounce, it also does not match with Nilu's aesthetic at all. However, it does give a bonus of 66% of the user's max HP as a substat, and then additional HP% percent increase from the passive. This is freaking insane for Nilu and any other HP scaling sword characters. Not only that though, but whenever an elemental skill hits opponents, the user gets a 20 second buff that grants elemental mastery that scales off of the user's max HP. This can stack up to 3 times, and by gaining 3 stacks, your entire party gets a stronger elemental mastery buff for 20 seconds. This one, outside of the look, is an obvious must have for any Nilu mates. A secondary option to this, if you already have it, is the Primordial Jade Cutter. It has a low basic attack but provides raw crit rate and HP% percent boost for Nilu. If you plan on adding a C2 Nahida to your Nilu team in the future, the Jade Cutter provides some obvious synergy. Swords that provide an HP bonus are currently hard to come by, but Elemental Mastery is a different story. The Freedom Sworn is the best Elemental Mastery sword there is right now, with a high basic attack, Elemental Mastery, and a passive that increases damage dealt no questions asked. It also has the potential to increase your normal charging and plunging attack damage for 12 seconds for every two elemental reactions. Alternatively, Cyphos' Moonlight is a 4-star elemental mastery sword that enables Nilu to provide a supportive function outside of her Golden Chalice special passive, or her ability to apply wet while off the field. Is it Cyphos or Cyphos? Anyways, the sword allows Nilu to provide her party with an increased energy recharge dependent on Nilu's total elemental mastery. If you're looking for a more damage-centric 4-star elemental mastery option, there's always the Iron Sting. The passive increases all damage dealt for 6 seconds whenever elemental damage is dealt, which is something Nilu is very good at. This can stack twice and occurs every second. At Refinement 5, Nilu will get a 24% damage increase essentially all the time. Another option could be the Festering Desires. While not the most synergistic with Nilu, if you're strapped for choice, the passive on the Festering Desires does help Nilu's personal damage out quite a bit. Harbinger of Dawn can be a very powerful choice in the right team comp. For example, if you have a way to keep Nilu's HP high via Barbara or Kokomi, and then a way to provide crit to Blooms like Nahida, Nilu can make full use of the crit damage and crit rate provided by this weapon. 
Nilu's constellations are straightforward and focus on helping her deal more damage. Her constellation 1 enhances the last step of her elemental skill, Dance. Increasing her Sword Dance finisher damage by 65%, this is known as Luminous Illusion, and increasing her Swirling Step, her elemental skill finisher, duration by 6 seconds. Nilu's constellation 2 allows her to apply Hydro Resistance and Dendro Resistance Shred by 35% for 10 seconds. To get the Hydro Resistance Shred, a character affected by the Golden Chalice Bounty must deal Hydro Damage to an opponent. And to apply the Dendro Resistance Shred, you must trigger a Bloom Reaction and deal that Bloom Damage to the opponent. Nilu's Constellation 3 levels up her Elemental Burst by 3. Nilu's Constellation 4 grants Nilu an additional 15% Elemental Energy and increased damage from her Burst by 50% for 8 seconds whenever she finishes the third step of her Elemental Skill Dance. Nilu's Constellation 5 levels up her Elemental Skill by 3, and her last Constellation is insane. For every 1000 point of max HP, Nilu's crit rate and crit damage will be increased by 0.6% and 1.2% respectively. The maximum increase in crit rate and crit damage via this method is 30% and 60% respectively. This constellation is definite whale bait because for it to work well, you're gonna need a C2 Nahida to grant your bloom crits as well. Otherwise, this is kind of a somewhat wasted stat for a golden chalice bloom team. Now, if you want to use Nilu in other teams, this can be a very good constellation as well. But I'm just going to say it right now, regardless of if you're a whale or not, you don't need this. Now, if you want to do it because it makes you happy and you can afford it, go for it. I support you completely. Overall, Nilu seems like a ton of fun, but a bit gimmicky. She can be considered a prototype for future characters that can literally change the game's core mechanics. On one hand, this can provide players with more ways to play and interact with the game. On the other hand, we could have more restrictive and complex passive override the game if left unchecked. Within the Genshin community, her Golden Chalice passive has been somewhat controversial. But for me personally, I'm always excited to see Hoyoverse try new things with a character's kit. She seems fun to play and can be used as an off-field support somewhat for future use and seem pretty easy to build for most people. She seems effective right out the box at Constellation Zero, and as of right now and going a little bit into the future, it seems Genshin is more focused on being a casual experience than an in-game, you must have this amount of damage to proceed type of game, which is great for all of us. She seems fun to play regardless of being on a Bloom team or not, but has the potential to be used off-field if you did want to use the Golden Chalice passive but not use Nilu as a main driver, which is kind of nice for some people out there who may want to do that. Being an HP scaling character, she's also pretty easy to build. I think you're going to have a powerful Nilu up and running without too much hassle. With all of that said, are you interested in pulling for Nilu? If so, how do you plan to build her and what teams will you be running with her? Let me know in the comments below, and if you're interested in learning more about Candice, check out this video on screen right now. It's been a pleasure, and I'll see you next time.